Hi, this is Bill Berry. We are in week seven of our Java 2 class, and we are starting into some really interesting territory. This week we're starting to talk about event-driven programming, and then to give an example of that, we're going to look into Java Swing, and this will help us create sample graphical user interfaces, and we'll also talk about how you can draw directly on a J-Panel. If you're using the textbook we're using, we've been leveraging the author's drawing panel, but we are now going to learn how to draw ourselves on our own J-Panel, really not that much harder. So some interesting stuff coming this week, different directions, so let us jump in and get started. First, event-driven programming. What's going on with that? It is a different way to interact with the world. It's a little bit disconcerting at first to see how some of this stuff works because it feels like we're giving up some control. What is it? Well, it is a way to set up software in which instead of prescribing, directing all of the action, for instance, sitting there and waiting in a tight loop for the user to answer a question, instead we're able to kind of sit back and write code that can respond. The code can say, yep, you know, when you click the button, I'll answer. I'll do the thing that I need to do. When you choose this particular thing, I'll decide if I need to do anything as a result. So it feels a little bit laid back and chill, but also a little different because you don't direct the action so much. Often these actions that are going to trigger these events are going to be things like user clicking buttons, pressing keys, but they can be other things that can happen in the system. Sensors, timers, messages from other programs, threads, like there's there's different ways that you can deal with events, uh, but let's we're going to start with some simple ones like clicking buttons because those are the most typical and the most easy to understand. Event-driven programming is super typical in graphical user interfaces. So, of course, we're going to create some sample ones of those so that we can get the idea. You really get a fuller sense of event-driven programming once you create some of these things, however you create in whatever platform you choose. Again, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's a little different. There's a program that we're going to write in class, which is one of the fanciest ones that we've done with UIs and separate windows and all kinds of neat things. And main is literally going to be about three lines long. It's going to set in motion all of the things that need to happen, and then the code just waits, and when things happen, things happen, and write code is going to be run. But it's a little strange to see you sort of spinning up and throwing these things out into the universe, and then doing nothing. So, different and interesting. We're going to take a peek at Java Swing. This is going to take us into several videos, so I'll stop whenever it looks like we're getting to a good stopping point. And we're going to be developing a Java Swing application from scratch. Simple, right? We're staying simple because our focus here is on event-driven programming, not on this particular technology. So what is Java Swing? You can create platform-independent graphical user interfaces. Platform-independent means they'll work on and they'll look the same on whatever platform you run on. So what is it exactly? Well, it's not an acronym, so you don't have to say what does the letter S and the letter W stand for. It's not an acronym. It's a lightweight graphical user interface tool. Lightweight means it doesn't rely on the operating system to create, maintain, respond to any kind of widgets, any kind of controls that you are placing. So it's not interfacing heavily with Windows, for instance, on my system. It is instead creating these things for itself. It is writing all of these things in Java. So everything is Java-based, and it is a, a system that is portable, and it doesn't have a lot of overhead by interacting with the operating system. So there's a little bit other uh, background here, and so you can uh, certainly create sample user interfaces with this. We'll talk about the fact that there are separate things that you can use in the world. This is not the only game in town, but this is a completely reasonable place to start as you're learning these things. It does have a rich set of controls, right? Very rich, actually. You can do tree displays, not tree as in graphical, but in like uh, hierarchical data, images, tabs, sliders, toolbars, buttons, color choosers, file choosers. There's all kinds of good things that you can create with this. So you'll find that the set of widgets is perfectly fine, perfectly reasonable for what we need here. You'll also find, though, Swing is not the only game in town. So 
There's plenty of information here on this screen if you want to read it. Uh, some people say, well, why are you teaching swing? Because it's there's something newer, better, shinier. It doesn't matter, right? That's not the point here. The point here is we want to learn a little bit about event-driven programming, and swing is just as good as anything else as a starting point. Once you understand these things, if you want to go learn about something fancier, like Java FX, that is more useful for creating real applications, it is shinier, newer, prettier, fine. You'll be able to learn that knowing the basics that you learn here. It's not going to be a very big leap. So that's why we're starting here. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to first create some very simple graphical user interfaces. So we're going to start creating a, a window that we'll interact with. Then we'll look at how we can add panels, how we can add widgets on top of them, like buttons and sliders and whatever it else we want to do. And then we will look at event-driven programming. So how do we make the thing go when the buttons are clicked? We will certainly uh, talk about whether we have time in videos to look at text boxes and labels and other kinds of things. We may or may not. And then if we have time, we'll talk also about some fancier widgets like the color chooser. There's some very rich things like file choosers and color choosers, and using them is amazingly simple to integrate them into your graphical user interfaces. So depending on time, uh, we, we may or may not cover all of those things in videos. I'm mostly focused on giving you the basics so we're really clear. The other thing to note here is most of the imports either come from AWT. You may notice that from the past. Recognize that as being something that when we used colors, right, that's, that's very popular. There are some also that come from Java AWT event, specific event-driven stuff. And there's also some things that come from Java X. Notice there's an X here, so it's not java.swing, but javax.swing. So most of the imports are going to be from one of those three things. So I think that is enough for starting with the basic introduction of what we're going to do and setting up the lay of the land. In the next video, I'm going to pick up. We're going to start, and we'll talk a little bit about the topic of which sort of widget, what sort of thing we're using, why, and then we'll start creating code together that implements a simple graphical user interface. So stopping here, and pick up on the next video to continue learning about Swing Basics.